All right, guys, we're going to start unit three, and we're going to talk about ordered pairs and domain and range. So to start off with this, we're going to look at the length of a femur and the height in inches. So as you can see, they've labeled them here as far as your X and your Y values. So our X and our Ys, all right? So if we were to ask to put those in an ordered pair, you're simply taking your X and your Y. So for an ordered pair, you have your x values and you have your y values. So you have 45.5, 65.5, and so forth. I'll be down to 50.4, which is our last x value, and 70.0 for our y values. So that is creating the ordered pair for given data. So the definition of a relation in x and y. Any set of ordered pairs, x and y, is called a relation in x and y. Furthermore, the set of first components in the ordered pairs is called the domain of the relation. And the set of the second components in the ordered pairs is called the range of the relation. So there's where we get our domain and range. Domain is dealing with your x, and y is dealing with your range. So if we're to look at this, finding domain and range of relation. So with these, uh, we have the length of a woman's femur and her height. So again, with these, as you guys probably know already, you got your X and your Y values, right? So let's list our domain and our range. So for our domain, our domain are all our X values, right? So it's a domain. So now we're going to look at our range values. If we're given a ordered pair like this, so this will be your y. So we'll correspond to that. We have our 65.5. So that takes care of our domain and range dealt with this ordered pair. So let's find our domain and range of dealing with these two bubbles here. In which case, our x values here and our y values there. So our domain is simply our x values. For our range, we simply have 0, 0, 8, 15, and 16. Now, if we're given a graph with some data points on there, dot plots, now let's look at this. So let's go ahead and just get the values for these dots. So our first one here, x value is negative 4, and y is 1. This next one, so x is 0, y is 2. Then we have x is 1, y is negative 3. Then we have two of them at the x value of 4. So we have 4 and 4. And we have 4 and negative 5. So our domain is all our x values. Remember, x comma y. So we have negative 4, 0, 1, 4. And if we need to write that 4 again, hmm, no, nah, if you wrote it in there once, you should be good to go. It's understood that the 4 is there. Our range. So our range is 1, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 5. Oh, well, should I have written it in that order? No, we want to go from least to greatest. So let's change that. In which case we're left with negative 5, negative 3, 1, 2, and 4. Now, if we have a circle, as we're showing here, Let's talk about our domain range with this. It's not so much points. So we have many dots that are connected here to make a circle. They're all connected. So domain, what you need to realize is dealing with your x values. So I'm only worried about the x-axis. I'm only worried about the x-axis in this setup. I'm only worried about the x-axis. So where this blue line touches the x-axis. So for my domain, it looks like we go 
we touch at a negative 4 and then we're going to touch at 0. Now since it's a solid line and they're touching, we use our square brackets for our interval notation. So now if we look at our range, what do we have there for that? We're worried about where the y-axis is touched by this blue circle. Now it doesn't mean it's going to cross the y-axis, but what value on the y-axis is it touching? So as you can see, it's going from negative 2 to 2. Again, you always want to start with the lowest number and what it's going to. And since it's actually touching, we're going to say it's brackets, because this is a solid circle, solid line, a circle. All right, so if we have this nice little sideways V, what are we going to have for our domain? Our domain, again, is dealing with the x-axis. So if we're dealing with the x-axis, what is the farthest left it goes? How far left is it going? It's going on forever to negative infinity. So we have at least one side we know is going to negative infinity. How far right is it going? Well, it's only going all the way to zero. So zero is how far right it's going. Again, domain is dealing with your x-axis. And since this is a solid line, it will touch every point. So since we have a solid line, we know it touches zero, but we don't ever really know exactly what negative infinity actually goes to. It can go on forever and ever and ever. So that's why we just put an open bracket, or an open parentheses, I'm sorry, to designate around infinity, it's either negative or positive. For our range, for our range, we're looking at the y-axis, the y-axis. So now we want to know our lowest point, right? So how far down is it going? And how far up is it going? So as you see, this arrow is going on forever and ever and ever. So the range is going to negative infinity on the y-axis. It's going all the way down. It's going all the way down to negative infinity. Where is it going up to? Well, it's continue to grow. It's continue to go on forever and ever in this direction. So it's going to positive infinity on the y-axis. So positive infinity on the y-axis as well. And as I said a minute ago, because these are infinities, we're going to use parentheses. Because we don't know exactly what infinity number actually equals out to. All right, guys. Well, hope you learned a little something today that summed up a little bit of domain range. And I'll see you next time.